Hello, my dear students, and welcome to week seven overview. During this week, we are going to talk about the representative groups. So, firstly, we're going to start with defining the valence electron. So, valence electron is an electron that is in the highest occupied energy level of an atom. Then, we have that valence electrons play a key role in chemical reaction. So properties vary across a period because the number of valence electrons increase from left to right. Elements in a group have similar properties because they have the same number of valence electrons. So the properties are not identical because the valence electrons are in different energy levels. And also because hydrogen has a single valence electron, it is grouped with other elements such as lithium that have only one valence electron. So what are some properties of the A groups in the periodic table? So the elements in group 1A, those are called the alkali metals. These metals have a single valence electron and are extremely reactive. Because they are so reactive, alkali metals are found in nature only in compounds. So, the reactivity of alkali metals increase from the top of the group to the bottom of the group. We have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Being from this group, being the lithium is the least reactive and the reactivity increases, francium is the most reactive element of this group. So, when sodium reacts with water, enough energy is released to ignite the hydrogen that is produced, is going to uh, make a flame, a flame which is purpley flame, and so on. So, the second group of the periodic table, which is the elements in group 2A, those are called the alkaline earth metals. All alkaline earth metals have two valence electrons. So, Calcium, strontium, and barium react easily with cold water. Magnesium will react with hot water, but not with cold water. No reaction occurs when beryllium is added to water. So magne magnesium plays a key role in photosynthesis. The compound at the center of this process is chlorophyll, and at the center of chlorophyll is a magnesium atom. We have the calcium carbonate, a compound of calcium, carbon, and oxygen, is the main ingredient in chalk, limestone, and coral. Also, your toothpaste may contain the compound calcium carbonate because this hard substance can polish your teeth. We have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and uh, radium. So, chlorophyll molecules in spinach contain magnesium. An oyster shell and a pearl are both made of calcium carbonate. A plaster cast contains a compound of calcium sulfate. We have here the boron family, which is group 3A, contains the metalloid boron, the well-known metal aluminum, and three less familiar metals, gallium, indium, and thallium. So all these elements have three valence electrons, and aluminum is less reactive than sodium and magnesium. Aluminum is strong, lightweight, and malleable. Aluminum is a good conductor of electric current. So moving then to the boron family. So we have a compound of boron, silicon, and oxygen is used to make glass that does not shatter easily when its temperature changes rapidly. Then we have the carbon family, group 4A contains a non-metal carbon, two metalloids, silicon and germanium, and two metals, tin and lead. Each of these elements has four valence electrons. So carbon, silicon, germanium, tin and lead, those are the carbon uh, family. Silicon is the second most abundant element in Earth's crust. The clay used to produce this pottery contains silicon compounds called silicates.